Let's start with the with the first category that you wrestle with in the book, which is the more existential fear that sort of came out of your, the death of your mother. Um, what happened in that thought process, and and what did you learn from that process when when your mom died? Yeah, it was it was something that I expected. This sounds really simplistic, but I expected it to ruin my life, and I can only explain that by saying that my understanding of my mom was that she had been like absolutely fundamentally shattered by the loss of her parents uh, at at a very young age. Right. Yeah. She lost her mom when she was nine and her dad when she was 18. Um, and, and, and her dad was, I would say not exactly there for her after her mom's death in any case before he died. Um, he didn't do a great job on the, on the, the parenting after that, unfortunately. Um, he was obviously, you know, grieving himself and, um, so she didn't have a lot of parental support growing up and, and it really affected who she was as an adult and, um, her sense of herself in the world. And I was obviously an up close witness to that. And so I felt, I sort of understood it as, as a, a life ruining event. And so when my mom, uh, had a stroke when I was 33 and, and died suddenly, I thought, Oh, this is, this is it. You know, I'm, a, I'm about to become a total mess. Uh, which I was for a while, but, but I didn't, um, but it wasn't permanent for me for various reasons, uh, including, including, you know, the love and support I had from my mom for 33 years. Uh, and so what I learned was about resilience, I guess. And, and that, um, ended up putting me in kind of a more peaceful place in terms of thinking about future, future losses. Nobody looks forward to terrible loss and grief, but I, I feel like I understand it better now. And I understand my resilience and my ability to move through those feelings, um, in a way that in some ways, um, I guess my mom couldn't, but I also didn't understand her resilience as well when I was younger. Um, and, and I think she was tougher than I gave her credit for. You use the phrase sad forever. You know, the idea that when you feel a loss like this, you just can't understand how you won't be able to be sad forever, which which feels relatable. You know, my parents are, are both alive, but I'm not sure how I'm going to deal with the fact with what will happen when I lose my parents. And I'm, um, I'm much older than you were when you lost your mom. So was there a therapeutic component to this or was it just sort of a philosophical thing that you dealt with internally? I did see a grief counselor and that was really helpful. Um, I... It mostly dealt with it internally, just kind of, I tried to just go easy on myself for quite for a period of time. And, uh, I, you know, I arranged to take a couple months off work. I, I tried to just give myself time and space and, and eventually I, you know, and I talked to friends, I had a few friends who had lost parents, uh, in their twenties and thirties that I talked to a lot and, and they said, you know, give it a year and then, and then you'll, you'll still be sad, but you'll be, you'll feel you know, better. I, the, the main, the scary thing, well, one of the scary things about it was feeling sort of out of control and like I might do something really irresponsible in my, in my grief or something, you know, I felt like this kind of urge to burn things down. And, and that was a scary place to be in, um, it feels like you might do things you would regret later. Um, yeah, I made a one year ban on major life decisions. Huh. Was the advice your friends gave you the same advice you would give to people in general in in dealing with this situation, which is such a normal human situation that doesn't really subtract by how devastating it can be when one loses loses a parent, especially um, at a younger age? Yeah, I think so. I've you know I've I've since had other friends lose parents, and then I'm in the, in the role of of talking with them, and 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 my advice is generally you know give yourself as much time as you, as you are able, give yourself permission to be a mess. Uh, you know, so sometimes we don't, as a society, we're not great at talking about grief and loss and, and particularly with adults who lose parents, I think it's not always seen as a, as a huge deal in a way, you know, people are expected to be back at work, you know, right after the funeral and, and, mm. uh, but it's a, it's a really big, it well, depending on your relationship with your parents, I guess, but it's a really big thing. Um, and so I, I sort of tell people, you know, society's not going to necessarily give you permission to be as upset as you're going to be, but just it's okay. It's okay to be as upset as you're going to be. 